little bit different today, and maybe you have seen this floating around the interwebs, because on Wednesday, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Deputy, Los Angeles Sheriff's Deputy Department, the Department of the Bamas, of all the gang members, the alleged <laughs> gang members, per the astounding reporting of Cerise Castle, on Wednesday, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Deputy held a press conference where he released body cam footage of a disturbing incident that took place back in July of 2022. And it features an L.A. Sheriff's Deputy beating up women, forcefully trying to remove babies from the custody of their mothers because of a traffic stop. And this is a recurring theme <laughs> here with police. This is how police affect engagement with the public, what they do to get their quotas up, make sure their quotas stay in strong in terms of public contacts, et cetera. Um, but this one turned violent. And there's no question it turned violent because of the actions and the escalations of the cops in this instance. So I want to get the story if we could, you know, we, we, we tell the stories here, but it also kind of doubles as a little bit of, um, media, mainstream media analysis and critique. Cause it's usually some bullshit and some propaganda, and this is no different. So, uh, this video came from, who is this? Will? is this KTLA? Yes, it is. KTLA out in Los Angeles, uh, an infamous propaganda outlet, <laughs> right? And they're going to tell the story regarding this traffic stop where um, women were attacked and content warning for police brutality, for violence against women, for children being placed under extreme emotional distress. And another content warning, because we're going to see one of um, our nemesis, even though Alex Villanueva did not, has not ever attacked me personally. I felt attacked when he came after Cerise Castle. You guys remember I did a, I did almost a whole show about it because he got on his radio show and was basically harassing her, targeting her, making her susceptible to some sort of violence from jackbooted thugs within the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. But I digress. So let's check out this copaganda's rag package from KTLA. Then we're going to come back and talk about the real to real. Will, let's 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 take a look. When the sheriff's department, the body cam video that they released is over eight minutes long, but the focus is on just a couple of seconds where a deputy is seen punching a woman they were trying to arrest. Take a look. It happened last year in Lancaster when deputies pulled over a car that was being driven with no lights on at night. Once stopped, deputies reported smelling a strong odor of alcohol and eventually arrested the male driver for DUI and driving with a suspended license. Inside the car, they also found he had seven passengers, four women and three babies, including a three-week-old. None of the children were secured in car seats, deputies noted. They were just being held by their mothers. So they decided to arrest the three mothers for child endangerment, except two of them didn't want to be arrested or hand over their children. What is the case, in the case of one woman, the one with the three week old in her arms that has prompted the release of this video because the sheriff's department says the deputy punched her two times in the face. There was no major injuries and obviously no one was was shot. So this does not have the same pathway like a deputy involved shooting is to create a false image in the eyes of the public about the nature of the incident. And I think that's inappropriate. In fact, I think it's unethical. A tragedy was averted because they were pulled over successfully. All of it would take one small traffic accident and all those babies would have gone flying. Now that's 
former sheriff Alex Villanueva commenting on the case that happened under his watch. But again, he says he did not know about it. The sheriff's department also says that they're limited by law in saying what disciplinary measures were imposed on the deputy. In a written statement issued by ALADS, that's the Association for LA Deputy Sheriffs, its president said in part, the physical safety of the infants was clearly our deputy's highest priority as they were seen pleading with the women for a lengthy period. There will be a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking and some will no doubt say that things could have been done differently. We will let the public decide that for themselves. And again, the sheriff, the new sheriff, Robert Luna, is asking for a complete criminal investigation and has also asked the FBI to look into it. <laughs> Yeah, the FBI is on the case. You guys take some comfort in that. Uh, NPR goes on to further report that the deputy who has not been named was subject to an internal affairs investigation very shortly after that incident took place in July of 2022. The deputy has since been disciplined. It is not currently in the field. Well, I guess we can take a little bit of comfort of that, that a person who punches women in the face and tries to physically pry their infant children out of their arms, that this person is no longer in the field because they sound like quite the threat to public safety. And okay. So let's back up a little bit. Let's the, the people who were accused here, the driver, a male accused of DUI. Um, I need to know why, <laughs> why, why do people get punched in the face? Cause somebody got pulled over for a DUI. The children not restrained in car seats or seat belts, problematic, an issue. No question. Does it warrant child endangerment charges on the spot? There wasn't a better way to handle that. And to be in the interest of fairness, I have not watched all eight minutes of the body cam footage that was released. And to be clear, the Los Angeles Sheriff's deputies, <laughs> that video was edited. Okay. It, they did not release an unedited version of those events. What was released was edited. And it, in the fairness of disclosure, I have not even watched the eight edited minutes. So let me say that. But I will say, if I had a, a three-week-old baby, <laughs> I don't care if the baby wasn't in a car seat. Is the baby in my arms? You don't get to take my baby from me simply because the baby was not in a car seat. You, as the police officer, should be trying to make other arrangements. Why don't you give me a ride? Why don't you take, why don't you take us to where we need to be? Why don't you allow me to call someone else to the scene who has a car seat that can come and make sure that I can transport my infant in, in, a, in a legal way. This quick escalation to charge these women with child endangerment and to literally steal their kids from them on the street, like literally stealing their kids. Can you imagine how frantic those mothers must have been? And then to be further terrorized by being physically attacked by a sheriff's deputy. Now, there's a lot of unanswered questions here. I, I, I was not able to find reporting that talked about what happened to those women. Were they charged? Were they convicted? What happened to the children after the night of, of that encounter and experience of police terrorism. Like the, the lasting effects of the way the police engage generally with the community. I mean, we really minimize, we as a society, not we as the fire fam, but we as a society or they, let me stop saying we, I do speak French, but let me stop claiming ownership to some fuckery I don't sign off on. American society is so accustomed to police using terror and violence as part of their job. They authorize it. They as a society sign off on it. It's okay if police get violent because you didn't comply. There are levels to this shit, man. I believe violence can be met with violence, but oftentimes it is the police who are the antagonizers, who are the provocateurs, who initiate the violence. 
either physically or by the the the, the so called duties of them doing their job, stealing children, infant babies. No, actually, children regardless of the age, but especially infants. Children who are so tiny and vulnerable, trying to steal these kids out of the arms of their mother is a violence. That is a violence against the child and the mother. And by extension, the rest of the family. The mother gets arrested, charged with child endangerment, and all of these other things begin. And again, I'm not condoning the actions of these mothers when it comes to allowing their babies to ride without a car seat at the same time i'm gen x okay at the same time i'm gen x you feel me like what what was what was a seatbelt? what what was secondhand smoke what was all these things and not to say that <laughs> because we survived pre-child safety regulations right that doesn't mean that the, the that the way that we were treated and raised was necessarily good, but goddamn, you know, many of us a- arrived alive after being held in the lap of a parent, family member, or whomever, right, at a certain age. But did you see the former Los Angeles uh, sheriff there, Alex Villanueva, just a villain of villains, just <laughs> just the worst of the worst, and it sucks. And fuck KTLA. For going ahead. Well, I guess it, he he did have some newsworthiness to the story. Let me not be too hasty in my in my blanket condemnation. But uh, the 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 newsworthiness that Villanueva had to the story is that this happened while he was still in office. He is no longer in office, and you heard him there. He said a tragedy was averted by these officers st- stealing these babies from the arms of their mother. How the fuck do you know that? Like, again, this assumption that police and public safety are like this. <laughs> they aren't. And as you saw there, I, I mean, I have no idea what could have happened, what would have happened to the driver and its occupants, including those children, had the L.A. sheriffs not stopped them, not pulled them over, not, you know, made, you know, recognized they were driving without lights again. I would call that reckless behavior, but not behavior that warrants the rise in violence that we saw there, especially against women who were simply trying to protect their children. But because the police are an occupying force and they don't view us as people, uh, you know, you can you can you can steal the cubs from the animals. Right. You can steal the pups from the wolves. These aren't humans we're actually talking about. No one's going to, who's going to care? But yes, this deputy continues to be unnamed. And as you heard in the package there, the current sheriff of Los Angeles County uh, claims that there's a criminal investigation underway. Okay. Um, In recent weeks. Okay. What is this? The department is investigating a late June incident in which two deputies threw a woman to the ground in a grocery store parking lot. Oh, that's right. I think I did see that. So yeah, so NPR is just referencing the second (laughs) use of force incident plaguing the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department in recent weeks, including specifically incidents where the sheriff's deputies are engaging in violence against women. But it doesn't stop there. I mean, we could do cops ain't shit on L.A. all day. Big up to my L.A. people, all the people, them. Shout out to the to the L.A. crew. 